Welcome to the mess that is currently my garage. This is a 2004 Super Kia Turn 15 LMS. Sorry, I'm trying to read the label. And today we're going to talk about its corks and features. So, I uh, picked this large piece of equipment off of eBay. <laughs> But I did see it in person running, making profitable parts. So it's not as bad of a story as we think it is. A fun time with the riggers. Probably won't go over that, but just know that get your stuff in writing. Kids, like usual, we're reminded to get things in writing basically every year. Coolant tank, 50-gallon coolant tank, needs a bath. Very large chip conveyor, which sits on top of said coolant tank. Needs a bath. The lathe is a uh, 9,500 pounds uh, sitting empty, I think. That's pretty much what the internet told me. It's got a main. It's got a sub. It's got a C-axis. Um, what is that? 12 stations, I think. Parts catcher on both the main and sub. No through turret coolant, coolant, just uh, flood. Not sure what the options are for that, but um, I'm going to guess it could have been added or can be added. I'm not too sure. Well, what else? Uh, Fanic OITB. That's cool. I got a DNC converter for the uh, thing there. I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah, it's it's, it's pretty big. It's seven feet tall. I guess putting my hand there doesn't really represent anything. And uh, yeah, the bar loader is an Eagle 542. It's the longest one <laughs> that came with the manual, I found out, so that's awesome. The guy I bought it from, in love with full length bar feeders. He didn't own a bandsaw, so clearly that was, this is representative of his thought process. Uh, that works. Everything on here works, which is nice, because I saw it running, making profitable parts. It needs a bath. Quite quite a heavy bath. Uh, like I said, working in a uh, machine shop, making parts. Thing was not getting cleaned. Clearly, there is kitty litter everywhere. It smells like his shop. His shop does not smell good. No mist collectors. I think he had, like, 15 turning pieces of turning equipment so running all the time so it was quite hazy in there really awesome dude but uh yeah so yeah you can you can imagine the shop it came out of but uh yeah i don't have any real more real info oh here's the tag if you wanted to see it oh that fell over that says 4800 kilograms or 4300 kilograms so you can do the math, because I certainly can't. And, uh, you know, just take a walk back here. I'll try to be as steady as possible. Yeah, you can see coolant's been dripping on there. It's just, yeah, it's pretty dirty. Hydraulic tank covers and everything could look a little bit more clean but other than that i uh you know ran everything on it it uh sounded really good so i'm not too fearful that things uh will not work but you know how this stuff goes you don't really know until it's making parts in your place So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start degreasing this thing and basically going over it and the coolant tank. So I'll probably not film very much of that because that's not really cool content, I guess. And uh, yeah, and see where we go from there. Something I did want to mention before I start this cleaning process is the fact that Based on the length of the bar loader, I could only stick this thing right 
in front of this mini split. Here is the issue you can see here. So that means heat will always be coming on and off, heating this side of the machine more than where the most of the casting is up front by the main. Um, so I'm I'm curious to see, not happily curious, but to see how much this changes part tolerances as this comes on and off during the day, which I actually imagine will be noticeable, but you don't really know until it's running. So that was just a little thing I thought I'd mention. All right, guys, uh, a couple days later, she's uh, wired up. <laughs> I'm about to try it. <laughs> So, what can I say? You never know with this stuff, you know? Alright, so here's the, uh, this is the converter. We got our scissor switch there. Uh, there's the, uh, line that goes, the, uh, right breakers are our lathe. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and fire it up, and then I'm gonna make sure the breaker has the right voltage. And then, we're gonna walk over the machine and, uh, hopefully turn it on, and hopefully the pumps are spinning the correct way, but I'll go over that in a second. Okay, so the voltage is test outed, test out, tested correctly at the uh, sub. Whew, okay, we're gonna go back here. We're gonna flip the breaker. <laughs> okay, so these fans are on, hold on, let me, uh, Here's a good way. I'm going to pop this open and I'm going to see if these fans are spinning the correct direction. Uh, unfortunately, I couldn't figure it out, but I, I don't think any of that stuff's going to be three phase, so. Light's working. That's, that's a good sign. The hydraulic pump is over here. And I checked the tank and made sure it had fluid in it. I am changing the fluid. Uh, so typically you can tell which way the motor is spinning like correct this has got an arrow that's pointing this way so that means correct motor rotation would be this way well, unfortunately there's no fan on the back of this motor and I can't see through this uh, radiator to see the shaft of the motor so I can't tell if it's gonna be correct and I guess if it builds pressure properly then that would be correct and uh, if it makes terrible noises, that's probably incorrect. But I'm, <laughs> I'm just, just gonna try. I'm gonna turn down all these pressures slightly. This one is down all the way. Weight oil's good. I guess you could do a whale test and see if it actually pushes it. I don't know. All right, we're gonna fire this thing up and hope hope it all works. Good start. Good start. Power button doesn't do anything. Oh wait. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> I saw the screen turn on. Uh, <laughs> I'm used to the click from the hot, so that's my impatientness. Let's uh, give it a couple seconds. Okay. Loading basic. Okay. Okay. I'm liking what I'm seeing here. Graphic is ready. Not ready. Hmm. Interesting. Oh god. What was that? <laughs> I'm scared. <laughs> okay. Okay. Okay, we pulled the e-stop. I'm gonna look in the manual and figure out how to home the thing. I wonder if this spindle motor fan should turn and push air out the back of it or suck air into it. I think 
the Haas pushes air out the top of the spindle, so maybe that's a rejection of heat, so hopefully that's spinning the correct direction. Alright, so we're getting this error message that says AL36 count up. I don't know what any of that means. Um, this manual is written in Korean English, so I'm going to Google it. Okay, we're just going to give it a shot. Right. Not many helpful people. I mean, probably there is, but I didn't read long enough. I'm going to get glasses. Not sure if this thing wants the door closed, but the door's a little iffy right now. So we're going to do... Oh, peeps, that's a good thing. 5%. Um, zero return. How about position? Okay, that's a good sign. How about how about how about the help button? <laughs> It blew the bulb in the panel in the light over there, so <laughs> that's usually not a good sign. So I'm going to investigate. Okay, so uh, it's the next day. Last night we got it running, but I uh, obviously was talking about I wasn't sure if the motors were spinning the right way. I'm pretty sure they are in fact spinning the right way because there is air blowing out the spindle outwards, which supposedly is correct on uh, most Fanuc spindle motors, so I think I'm good. Also, hydraulic pressure looks uh, fine and it adjusts normally, so I'm I'm uh, like 90% certain they're spinning the correct way. And uh, yeah, so yesterday I didn't I don't think I filmed this. I got an error for when you start up the machine. There will be errors, obviously. And I got an alarm for a um, what number was it? I don't know something. Uh, the description in the manual is like count up and I'm like what could that possibly be so that ended up being the work counter I just clicked this button and apparently this is also tied digitally to the control so I clicked this and then it that cleared that alarm however we have a hard uh, Z positive over travel so uh, I only got to mess with it for a little bit I had to leave but I believe and I was talking to the guys on the discord yes there's a machinist discord that it is likely the turret is passed or has hit the hard over travel limit switch. And uh, let me see if I can show you guys. Well, let me get a. Uh... I'm sorry for people who get motion sickness. <laughs> okay. Um. So here we are at the back of the casting. There's a door. There's a panel that's supposed to be here. And if you look up there, that's the Z. Can't really see you guys. Yeah, so those are the limit switches for Z. And the first one, I think, is the soft one. And you can see the back one is pressed down. And it's on its final pad, if you will. So, what I think we got to do is get it off there somehow. And uh, for some Googling, you can, um, what's the word? You can software unlock the parameter for the limit and gingerly move it away from the limit. Or we could attempt to move the ball screw away from it, I think. It's probably, what probably happened is it moved in transit because the original owners did not have shipping brackets for it. So I stuck wood between the turret and the sub to keep at least the turret from falling down. But I didn't have anything to, to back the turret uh, to keep that from moving backwards. So what probably happened is it hit a hard stop and is stuck back there. Um, so yeah, hopefully it's nothing too serious. And uh, yeah, so I'm going to work on that for a little bit, and then I'll kind of update you guys uh, what it is. And then we got 
other things to do. I debate if I want to clear that alarm first or if I want to change the fluids in this thing. And then we have a metric, you know what, ton of cleaning to do. This is right, this is the hydraulic, uh, this is the manifold back here that tanks right there. Uh, actually the uh, tanks blow out the motors in this little cabin here. But it's just, it's just dirty and it smells dirty. I walked in here, I was like, why does it smell like diesel exhaust? I'm pretty sure it's this thing smelling funky if you will um yeah so let me work on our uh z over travel problem and i will update you guys all right so update i was able to get back where that door opening is i showed you guys before i uh, put my back against this wall right here and push the turret forward off that limit switch so i'm gonna start it up Whew. And uh, hopefully that cures our one problem. As you can tell, I'm out of breath. Thing's pretty heavy. <clears throat> okay, let's uh, give this a shot. Okay, so at least it's not yelling at me about the Z travel over alarm or whatever. And this isn't lit up. But it does say emergency, so I'm guessing there's an E stop pressed somewhere. Oh, okay, here you go. I hit the I hit the start button. So this says door not closed. Okay. I guess I have to figure out the door <laughs> for some reason is stuck on something. And I, I don't know if it moved during transport again, but um, let me mess with it. But we are getting closer. All right, clearly you saw me able to move the door. I have stood up there, so I wasn't just taking a gamble that I was gonna hold my fat, you know, but, uh, so this is good. The only problem is the, the parts catcher is hitting the door for some reason. I'm not sure if it, Must be adjustable. It looks like it needs to sit like right there. Maybe it screws loose on the back. Oh, it is it is loose. Oh cool. Oh you can't see it but uh Yeah this guy. So you can turn it by hand. Very loose. Okay, uh let me tighten that up. That should solve our door in the way problem. Okay, that didn't really fix my problem. I did tighten it up a little bit. I think these are like adjustable, so I don't know. I'm gonna start the machine again and see if our door error is gone and uh, work on that. But uh, yeah, little little small problems. Nothing, nothing uh, show stopping yet, so that's good. All right, boys. It's been about three hours, so I forgot to put air on the system, so that didn't help. Um, I did take the switch apart and mess with that, so yeah, that helped, I guess. And uh, I plugged the bar loader in. There's, uh, it was unhooked. So it was either the air or the bar loader that was causing us not able to clear that weird um, door interlock alarm. I'm gonna guess it had to do with the bar loader, but anyways. So now we have full control over this thing, so I'm in Z. And as you can see, It moves. Here's X. Scary stuff.
Okay, I'm gonna attempt to home it and uh, see if stuff works. Okay, making slow progress. So basically, I got it able to uh, jog and everything. It just, uh, hold on, I haven't, I'm gonna see if it'll stop over here. I'm not sure if there's like, there must, there must be a limit switch over on this side. Sorry, the port sketch is in the way. Should be like right there. Okay, yeah, so that gave me an over travel alarm for this, so that's good, I think. So you can back up and then hit reset. So we're good there. So basically, when I go back in Z, I get a over travel alarm if I want to reference Z. So we're going to uh, move X upwards. So that'll over travel. So you back up that hit reset. Then if I hit jog and zero return, so it should return itself. And the X is fine, but Z is not. So it's gonna go back and basically over travel this thing. So it slows down. I guess it sees one switch slows down. And then it'll give me a over travel alarm. So I just need to figure out, I guess, something has shifted with the like the factory home position. It was probably changed for some weird reason. They had, you know, some, I'm sure they had some reason to do it, but anyways, I'll figure that out and then we'll continue on our journey. All right, so I just uh, messed with a couple more things and uh, couldn't figure it out, but I got the manual out. But what I'm gonna do now is now that I know the machine at least turns on and uh, jogs around and uh, does all that cool machine basic stuff, I'm going to uh, fully clean this thing. Uh, I'm gonna continue working on the coolant tank. You saw me doing that, I'm not done with it. And we're probably gonna do like a really light pre-charge, like 10 gallons or something just to flush everything out of the system and get the tank super cleaned when it gets installed. Uh, Cause what'll happen is no matter how good I'll clean it, liquid will actually find any uh, loose dirt or anything and pick it up. And then um, we'll clean that up and then we'll do another charge. But I don't think I'm gonna get all the way to that stage today. I still need to clean the chip conveyor and just the machine in general. I have a uh, hydraulic oil to change and uh, it's a disgusting mess in here. The hydraulic system, as most hydraulic systems are. So, uh, yep, this is the uh, hydraulic motor. This radiator, I, I think I talked about this, there's no fan on it. And there's like a ton of oily garbage in here against the radiator. And there's no way to take this panel off. There's these bolt holes here, but this, it's one corner of a panel. So that's, it's uh, the only way to take this entire panel off. Also, the tank's bolted to this panel, so it's not exactly, um, you know, it's not very easy. Also, I need to level the machine. That'll take me a very long time, because one, I've never even leveled a lathe, and there's five feet on this thing. So it's going to take me quite a while to figure that out. So first, I'm going to basically clean this up. I'm going to put the new hydraulic oil in here, and I'm also going to change the whey oil, which is right here. And uh, you might be saying, well, that, that's good whey oil. Why would you waste it? Well, here's the thing. I don't really know what they were running in this machine, but I do know that the factory manual calls for a certain type of oil, and I'd rather just do it right and put the right stuff in there. You never know. It's a big machine shop. They were probably just running whatever they had. Um, same thing with the hydraulic oil. And, um, yeah, you're supposed to change this stuff every 500 hours. And my guess is it skipped a couple of those intervals just by nature of this industry so the hydraulic oil the mach the manual calls for this is the way oil vectra number two mobile makes it and then uh, this is what I went for the hydraulic oil this is DT oil light now 
uh, on Mobile's website. This is for really not hydraulic systems. There is a blurb about hydraulic systems. Uh, I can't remember, light hydraulic systems or something. But the manual calls specifically for oil light. And there's another form of DT that is a, the numbered system, like DT24, which is specifically hydraulic fluid. As you can see, this says bearing and circulating oil. But, like I said, manual calls for this, so we're going to run this in there. And, uh, yeah, I'll get that changed. And, oh, I also got this, this grease that I stuck for it. But usually that stuff's just pretty cheap grease, nothing fancy. That's just for the chucks, honestly. The rest of the system is whey oil and hydro fluid. So I'm going to get all that stuff changed out, and um, I'll start doing a huge cleaning on this, and we'll uh, continue on from there. All right, I found the drain hole. So there's the uh, there's that radiator that's behind here. The drain hole is like on the bottom uh, left corner, and luckily I have a drain pan that's small enough, so this distance is really short, like uh, six inches maybe. The drain pan I can stick... Uh, down there around the motor around back and it, it gives me this much clearance to drain the uh, hydro hydro tank So that's good. So we're gonna do that. I'm gonna set that up right now Let that drain and then the whey oil from what I can tell there is no drain So I may take the canister out and just dump it and then put in my new stuff But uh, we'll get to that after Look at this odd thing. I found it looks like a disc brake they had it zip tied to the cabinet here and uh, came with some bolts. That's uh, interesting. I wonder where it bolted to. Very interesting, I gotta say. Oh, look, there's some loose hardware right here. Ah, uh, yes. So I'm gonna take this panel off, this uh, really dirty one. Give me better access to the back there. And uh, also clean the panel. Oh, well, that's pretty cool. That swings open. I didn't know that. Yeah, it's... <laughs> she's kind of dirty. Oh, look at the motor. It's kind of dirty, too. I'll clean that up. It's kind of gross. Beefcake. Look how... Look at that hole through the casting. That's pretty wild. Hold on. Yeah, that's pretty deep. <laughs> It's cool to see the back of the machine like this. That's motors down here, and then uh, you got a belt that uh, drives the actual spindle itself. Anyways, on to the simpler things. Here is the drain. It is down there. That guy right here. Looks like a Allen head. Nice thing is it's all metric because it's Korean, so uh, that makes stuff pretty easy. So let's start draining that guy. Alright, I think. Yep, that's a 10. 10 metric 10. What is that, 10 millimeter? Is that what that means? What horrors await us in here? turning, so that's a good sign. Alright, cool. Oh yeah, perfect fit. Let's go right in the drain hole. Uh, let me look at the runway. Alright, hopefully this, oh, I bet this oil is not very pretty. Based on how dirty this cabinet is, I don't think it's been changed very often. And the manual says 500 hours. Oh god. Oh god. Oh god. We did it again, boys. I don't think, I don't think our train pan was ready for this. doesn't look that 
that. Now there's quite a lot of metallics in it actually. Mm, yeah, there is kind of a bit of sheen to it. Hopefully that doesn't mean much. In a, in a car that means a lot. But here, in a hydraulic system, I'm not really sure what that means. I mean, is that parts of the is that parts of the pump? Is that parts of the manifold block? Did the hydraulic system pick up metal from somewhere else? Who knows? All right, I'm gonna clean this up. All right, I was actually able to figure out how to get the cover off the back there. So we got that. Those are those fins I was telling you, they're really dirty. Get to clean that, that'll be good. Keep the heat down on the, the pump system there. And uh, yeah, we're just gonna keep on trucking along. Try to, you know, do what we can. All right, I've been cleaning for a very long time. There's a lot of stuff to clean there. Um, it's a lot better than it was. It's not perfect, but I, uh, I can't <laughs> spend all year just cleaning this one section. So I got it uh, cleaned up as best as I could within the two hours that it took me. So now I'm gonna, I can't, I'm gonna unbolt this panel thing, uh, whatever you call it, and flip the whale oil out of that canister. And then I'm gonna fill the hydraulic tank. Hopefully not spill any anywhere. And uh, yeah, that's what I'm gonna do now. Oh, and also clean the front a little bit. And I should be good back here and then I can bolt it all back together. Good times. Oh, also, this block, it's a, I was wondering why it looked like a disc brake. That's because that's exactly what it is. It's a hydraulic disc brake. It goes on this said disc and bolts right here. It's some sort of spindle brake, but they took it off because who knows why. It also threw all this grimy paste everywhere. That's what that stuff is. Disc material for uh, friction material. So I don't know. They took it off for some reason. I mean, who knows? Uh... Anyways, I have seen this thing running and braking, so clearly it's not 100% necessary for operation. So I'll probably just get a uh, cap for the uh, the uh, hose, yeah, wherever the hose goes, on the manifold. Just cap and take the block out. Safest way to do it. But for now, it can sit there. And uh, yeah, okay, here we go.